All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to solve a beautiful equation with an even more beautiful solution. Namely, let's try to solve cosine of x plus sine of x equals 2. And you're probably like, wait a moment, Payam. I thought cosine plus sine is between minus square root of 2 and square root of 2. So how can it be possibly equal to 2? Yes. In fact, if x is real, then this equation has no solution. But if x is complex, then it actually has very beautiful solutions. So let's dive into this math adventure by exploring the complex world. First step, it turns out cosine can be rewritten in terms of exponentials as follows. e to the ix plus e to the minus ix over 2. Almost think cosh. And then sine is e to the ix minus e to the minus ix over 2i. And you set it equal to 2. The first order of business is to get rid of those ugly complex exponentials by just letting y be e to the ix. Then what does this equation become? e to the ix is y. e to the minus ix is the same thing as 1 over e to the ix, so 1 over y. 1 over y, and again over 2. And then same spiel here, y minus 1 over y over 2i equals 2. And well, let's just do some cosmetic fix. So let's try to get rid of 1 over y by multiplying both sides by y. But why, pi m? Because I say so. And you'll see it does simplify our equation. Then what we get? is y squared plus 1 over 2 plus y squared minus 1 over 2i equals 2y. And then let's just multiply both sides by 2i to get rid of this denominator. So this times 2i and then this times 2i then what we get is i y squared plus i and then plus y squared minus 1 equals 4i y. You know, notice this is actually just a quadratic equation. So let's just write it in the standard form. Namely, oh, I said it, okay. Namely, uh, we get i, 1 plus i, y squared, just uh, gathering the coefficients of y squared, and then minus 4iy, and then plus minus 1 plus i equals 0. Now, you could use the quadratic formula for this, but let's actually simplify this a little bit by making the leading coefficient 1. So let's divide by 1 plus i. And then what we get is y squared minus 4i, 1 plus i, y, and then plus minus 1 plus i over 1 plus i equals 0. Now, your calculus teacher or black pen, red pen, may have rightfully told you, I don't like to be on the bottom. So make sure there's no I on the bottom because, and this illustrates it perfectly, this formula simplifies a lot if you do that. In fact, almost magically so. Because, let's look at minus 4i over 1 plus i. And let's multiply it by 1 minus i and 1 minus i. Then the top becomes minus 4i and then plus 4i squared, which is minus 4. The bottom is 1 squared minus i squared, which is 1 plus 1, which just becomes 2. 
So in the end, we get minus 2i minus 2. That's on the one hand. It's already nicer than this fraction. But the real show comes with the constant term. Because let's just apply the same spiel here. Minus 1 plus i over 1 plus i. Let's multiply top, top and bottom by 1 minus i. Then, this is just minus this. So we end up getting minus, I think, 1 minus i squared. And the bottom is actually the same thing as before. So it becomes 2. And then let's see. Let's expand this out. So get minus 1 minus 2i, but with a plus, so plus 2i, and then minus i squared, that's minus 1, but with this extra minus sign becomes plus 1. So plus 1 divided by 2, and abracadabra, alakazam, this becomes, this goes away, and then 2i over 2 also goes away. And in the end, we get i. I approve of this because I is much easier than this fraction here. So in the end, what does this simplify to? Well, we have y squared. We have this minus uh, 2i minus 2, which you can just write as minus 2i plus 1. y, and at the end, i equals 0. You could use a quadratic formula here, but it's actually easier just to um, uh, complete the square. So in the end, this gives you y minus uh, 1 plus i squared minus 1 plus i squared plus i equals 0. So y minus 1 plus i squared minus, so we actually expanded this something similar out. So it's minus 1 minus 2i, and then i squared, which is minus 1, with this extra minus becomes plus 1. And then plus i equals 0. The 1's cancel out, and this becomes minus i. So in the end, what we get is that y equals 1 plus i plus or minus square root of i. Now, of course, this raises a question, what is square root of i? And there are plenty of wonderful videos on this, like on Black Pen's, Red Pen's channel, for instance. But just to summarize what square root of i is, well, i is just the same thing as ei pi over 2. And if you want, you can add multiples of myself. So plus 2 pi m i. So square root of i, which is square root of that, so this to the half power, which then just becomes e to the i pi over 2 divided by 2. So e to the i pi over 4 times e to the pi m i. But what is e to the pi m i? It's either plus or minus 1, which you'll see soon doesn't really matter, because here we are doing plus minus. And for what's going to come next, I want to remind you that e to the i pi over 4, that is cosine of pi over 4, plus i sine pi over 4, and that is 1 over square root of 2 plus i times 1 over square root of 2, which is 1 over square root of 2 times 1 plus i. And again, we will need this in a second. So what do we have? We then get that y is 1 plus i plus or minus, plus minus plus minus, so let's ignore that, e to the i pi over 4. Now, in general, we would be lost. 
because in general this is gibberish but not so on Dr. Payam's channel because it turns out for this specific equation we can go a step further and again this is like the most exciting part of the video if we wish because it turns out this quantity we can actually also rewrite this in terms of e to the i pi over 4 and it's just related to this formula because e to the pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2 of the same quantity so in fact if you factor out square root of 2 you get square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 of 1 plus i plus or minus e to the i pi over 4 you then get an extra factor of e to the i pi over 4 so this becomes square root of 2 e to the i pi over 4 plus or minus e to the i pi over 4 uh, yes enlightenment that's what I like about math and so in the end y is e to the i pi over 4 times square root of 2 plus or minus 1 and no we're not done because remember our goal was not to find y our goal is to find x but what was y it was e to the i x so we get e to the i x equals e to the i pi over 4 square root of 2 plus or minus 1 and well it would be nice if you could write the right hand side in terms of exponentials but in fact we can because of ln degeneres so we get e to the i pi over 4 e to the ln of square root of 2 plus or minus 1 which is really e to the i pi over 4 plus ln of square root of 2 plus or minus 1 and now we can actually equate the exponents. Okay, plus, uh, why not? Plus some multiples of myself. Plus 2 pi mi. Okay. And then we can solve for x because now we get ix equals e i pi over 4 plus ln of square root of 2 plus minus 1 plus 2 pi mi. And now to find x, just divide by i, divide by i, divide by i, over i, over i, and here the i's cancel out, whoosh, 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 and just remember what is 1 over i, again just multiply top and bottom by i, and then you get i over i squared, so just minus i. All right, and in the end, remember what did we want to solve? We wanted to solve cosine of x plus sine of x equals 2. Well, now we found our explicit solution. x is pi over 4 minus i, we get minus ln of square root of 2 plus or minus 1 i plus multiples of 2 pi. Whoa! And by the way, the multiples of 2 pi make sense because this is periodic. So in fact, here's a cool thing. Cosine of x plus sine of x equals 2 has a solution, but there's actually nothing special about 2. You could have replaced it by any positive number, for instance, which shows you something interesting, even though this is bounded in the real numbers, this can actually go to any, at least any real number that you want. So it actually blows up like that. So in other words, the complex world is crazy. It's kind of imaginary in our mind, but still surprisingly very applicable to real life. For instance, complex exponentials are used in signal processing. So whenever you hear a sound, coo -coo -coo -coo, you hear complex exponentials. Yeah. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.